Oh my god, they actually thought that they were gonna have a blue wave. But seriously, everyone both left and right, you need to hear this right now. There is a reason that this happened, and it's because Donald Trump is in violation of federal code. That is why this happened, and you need to pay attention to this. Trump is in severe violation of federal code 49 CFR 232.103. Just look at it. The primary brake system of a train shall be capable of stopping the train with a surface application from its maximum operating speed within the signal spacing existing on the track over which the train is operating. In other words, the Trump train has no brakes. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, per my usual hospitality, to Heck Off Kami. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel down below. And if this isn't your first time here, hi. I'm happy to have you back. Let's talk about some midterm results. Okay, so the Democrats were hyping up the midterms for a very long time, basically since November 9th of 2016. And the central point that I'm going to be making, my thesis statement, I guess, is that considering everything that the Democrats did in preparation for this election, their actual performance was pretty pathetic. And we'll talk about why, but I do first want to clarify that yes, Republicans did suffer losses in this election, just so people don't accuse me of pretending that we came out on top. No. The point that I'm making is that taking into context not only the results of the midterm elections historically, but also the amount of unwarranted hate that the liberal establishment has created within the culture, there's no reason in theory that they should have performed as they did. It should have gone a lot better than it did for them, but alas, it did not. Here's why. They have no platform, people are fed up with them, and they're stupid. That's basically it. Firstly. Their platform, I mean, what, what what even is it? In 2008, Obama was spreading a message of hope and change, and it was really easy for people to get behind, but the Democrats seem to now be campaigning on two things. F*** Trump, and if you aren't a white man, you're a victim. That seems to be it. And this isn't really working out for them, because Trump is objectively doing a fantastic job as president. Of course, there are things about him that could be better, but considering the way that he is treated in the media, you'd think that things were going down the drain in this country, which they aren't by the way, but I guess that's all thanks to Obama, because when Trump passes an executive order that mandates that 22 regulations be destroyed for every additional one regulation, it was just because Obama left him a note in the Oval Office like, hey, Donald, I uh, forgot to do this one last thing because uh, I was too busy campaigning for Hillary, so if you could just take care of it for me, that'd be great. Thanks, love, Barry. No, that isn't what happened, and people have noticed that their lives are getting better. Minority unemployment at historic lows, workforce participation at historic highs. I mean, people aren't stupid as much as the left wish wishes they were, so how exactly are you going to expect me to vote against a guy who's improved my life? Especially because you can't even provide any reasoning besides attacking his character. And then, of course, instead of veering away from the toxic identity politics that you've been having a ball with for the last decade that everyone is so tired of, you just doubled down on it. Like, are you serious? That brings me to my next point. The pyramid of victimization. These neo-Marxist leftists are so uneducated, they think that they've really figured out something that we haven't known for hundreds of years. Oh, so-and-so is a victim because they're black. He's a victim because he's gay. Yeah! Everyone is a victim! That's the point! Hear me out. Since there are conceivably an infinite number of ways to be a victim. You're a woman? Well, I'm a black woman. You're a black woman? Well, I'm a gay black woman who's handicapped and I only speak Spanish. There are no limits to the identities that one can assume and then be victimized for. So the only way that you can protect all of those identities is to narrow them down to one level. The individual. Only by protecting the rights of the individual can all other rights and protections be upheld. And the West figured this out hundreds of years ago. You're backtracking, you idiots. You really think that you figured out something new that the great thinkers and philosophers never even thought of? Oh, people are victims. Yeah, that's life. When everything's made to be broken. That platform doesn't work. And the one thing that's really disgusting is that the people that are perpetuating this are the rich, white liberals. I mean, they're trying to represent the minorities who uh, they maintain are held down in this country, but their party's still dominated by rich white people. And a lot of minorities buy into this narrative, but also a lot don't. And we see this because of the dramatic increase in minority support for Trump. They aren't going to buy into this victim narrative anymore. And that's very scary for Democrats because how else are they going to secure the minority vote? They haven't done anything for them economically, so all they can really do is say, hey, vote for me because, well, that guy's racist and he hates you because you look different. 
people are waking up. Your neo-Marxist identity politics is dying, and thank God for that. Not that you believe in God, because the Christian doctrine and the doctrine of a lot of other religions is that free will is essential for morality and free will translating into an absence of overreaching government, which certainly would be an obstacle for you, power-hungry elitists, now wouldn't it? So it's no wonder you want to remove God from this country. Getting off topic. Um, I mean, yeah, healthcare was the most important issue going into this election, but what have the Democrats proposed that we do about healthcare? Nothing, except maybe Medicare for all, but don't ask about how we're going to actually pay for it. Trump's policies have been largely successful and his poll numbers are reflecting that. And his poll numbers aren't even that bad compared to other presidents throughout history. But these young kids don't know that because they just now got into politics as a way to channel their teenage angst through pseudo-intellectualism. And they think hovering in the 40s for approval percentage makes Trump the worst. Boo Trump, oh boy. Uh, it's cool now for kids to be into politics, which I guess is, you know, brings up uh, young people have always been very liberal and now we're expected to be one of the most conservative generations of all time. It's funny to see everyone posting on social media about this yesterday saying, hey everyone, go vote! Like, this coming from kids that have never had an outspoken opinion on anything once in their lives, but they like the perception of being politically involved, so they encourage everyone to go vote, which brings me to something else that I wanted to bring up. Um, if marijuana weren't on the ballot in so many states, this blue wave would have gone a lot worse for Democrats because a lot of the liberal young people only care about politics when it means they can look passionate and intelligent. But if it means actually having to stand in line to vote, they're like, eh, I might stay home. Maybe not. Uh, unless their precious miracle drug, of course, is on the ballot, then yeah, of course they'll go vote to legalize it. But it wasn't enough to be the blue tsunami that you all thought. Remember when Obama lost 63 seats in the House and six in the Senate? Or when Bush lost 30 in the House and six in the Senate? Or when Clinton lost 52 in the House and eight in the Senate? None of these guys, especially not Obama and Clinton, had the constant flow of negative press working against them that Trump has, not even close. From the Mueller investigation, that's a total farce, to literally him misspelling something in a tweet becomes a headline. I mean, these people are so desperate to make this man look bad, they will quite literally jump on anything to do it, even if they know it's false, like that CNN producer was caught on camera admitting. Why is CNN constantly like Russia this, Russia that? Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? And yeah, this media coverage of Trump does get people to hate him, but only the people who already hated him to begin with are gonna buy into this. Remember when someone sent rice into the White House and it was talked about for all of two hours, but when someone sent bombs to Democrats, it was news for a week? No one else buys into this garbage other than the people already engulfed within the thought bubble. Everyone else sees right through it and they're sick of it. America is getting better, America is getting stronger, and America is getting greater, just like we set out to do. And nothing the Democrats will try to do will stop this because at the end of the day, what it comes down to, after all the rhetoric, after all the lies, when it's all said and done, President Trump is making this country better. And when your platform literally only consists of undoing the things he's done because Trump is mean, you're gonna lose every time, especially because all of your claims about Trump's character are misrepresentative and they have to be because you're never going to win by arguing with him on policy. So instead, you opt to manipulate the emotions of the voters. It's effective, but only when it goes unseen, which it is no longer. In theory, you're right. And this should have been a blue wave, a blue tsunami or whatever hyperbole you want to use, but it wasn't and it won't ever be. So sure, pat yourselves on the back, tell yourselves that you won yesterday. Sure, I guess you made a few gains. Enjoy it because your victories have been few and they are only going to shrink from here both in size and magnitude because your platform is dying and your base is leaving. So enjoy it while it lasts. Oh, hi, when did you get here? If you like this video, click my face down there to subscribe, leave a thumbs up and a comment, let me know how I'm doing. Share this video with that one obnoxious liberal you saw on Facebook that was so confident about that tsunami sweeping Congress. Thank you so much for watching as always and may God bless America. Pew.